the aphids ate my broccoli. Has that happened to you before? It's happened to me. Join me today on this episode of Sustainable Stace. We're going to talk about aphids, a five letter word in some people's gardens, why they're there, and some natural organic ways to control them. Here we go. I'm Stacy Taves. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. Aphids can be very troublesome in the garden. They can be green, brown, gray, white. There's actually thousands of different types of aphids. I'm just going to cut to some footage here and let you look at them while you listen to my voice. In this case, aphids are on some tatsoi. If you haven't seen tatsoi before, it's an Asian green growing in my garden. And some of it, as you can see, is flowering, and some of it's going to seed, and there's aphids over all the tips and stems of the plants. Here I'm clipping off a little piece of the tatsoi, and you can see aphids are all over it. There's hundreds and hundreds of aphids here, and actually the simplest way to control aphids, if you don't have too many, is just that. Just squish them off between your fingers. Yeah, it's a little bit gross, but it's a 100% solution if you're willing to take the time to just run your fingers over the plants and squish the little fellas between your fingers. So that's the number one way to control them. And yes, there's thousands of them and they really know how to reproduce. So we wanna cover a few different ways that you can address aphids in your garden today. Here's your simplest method for controlling aphids in your garden. Put a spray nozzle on the end of a water hose and go to the plants or the area of your garden if you don't have too big of a garden or too many plants that are affected by aphids and simply spray them off. That is the most natural, organic, safest way. If you need to, you can hold the stem of the plant up if it's a little bit fragile and just spray them off. No, I'm not going to soak myself on the video to show you. And it'll work perfectly well. Once the aphids have been knocked off the stem of the plant or the leaves of the plant and the water's knocked them off, they won't recover or make it back up. They're soft bodied, they're fairly frail, and once they've been knocked onto the soil, you will have done it. That should have been successful. So generally speaking, that'll work. And I'll just show you a piece of footage where I had that challenge with some sprouting broccoli and show you the success I had just by using water spray. This is a sprouting broccoli plant. Last year, it was all about producing food for the family here. This year, it's all about producing seeds. Uh, two weeks ago, it was almost ready to start harvesting seeds, but not quite. And it was also falling prey to a horde of aphids. I didn't want to use any chemicals or sprays. I simply came out here with a garden hose and a spray nozzle and I sprayed off all the branches and almost all the aphids were knocked off. A few remained and where they did remain, you can still see here and there's a little close up. Ladybugs came in and took care of the rest. Now it's time to harvest and I just want to show you when they're nice and dry as these ones are and you get the seed pods in your hand and I've got a big bucket I'll throw the rest into and you crack them open. Let me just don't want to lose the seeds to the ground. There. And there's all the sprouting broccoli seeds coming out from the plant. And you can see when you look here, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pods. And so all I'm doing is going branch by branch and finding where there's a good collection of them. There's eight or 10 seed pods right there. And I just have a big 20 liter pail on the ground and I just drop them in. And I'm just cruising through the plant, making sure that I'm being nice to any of the ladybugs that are still here and dropping these in. Once I've got a whole bunch of them in and I've got them in the bucket well, I just start crunching them up. And when I crunch them up like that, all the fiber lets go of all the seeds. I start out by just taking the big pieces and then I strain them out and eventually end up with thousands of seeds in the body ready to, ready to sow, ready to share, ready to sell. There you go. Cabbage family, sprouting broccoli, controlling pests and saving seeds all at once. Yeah. Yes, ladybugs. Ladybugs have to be mentioned in any conversation about aphids because they're like the best form of defense in your garden for aphids. They love to eat up aphids. They go at them like a vacuum cleaner and just suck them up. If you look to them in scale, an aphid is tiny, tiny next to a giant lady beetle or ladybug. And so if you've got ladybugs in your garden, you've probably got the solution in place already. And you may be able to go to a garden or a nursery store and purchase ladybugs and put them in your garden. That would be another great natural solution. So, so far we said you could squish them off with your fingers, you could spray them off with a nozzle, or you can release ladybugs or just encourage the ladybugs that are already in the garden to care for them. But if that doesn't work, you might have to go a little bit further and we'll talk about that. Now it's one thing to think about controlling the aphids as in trying to get rid of them when you're, they're in your garden already. But isn't the better question to ask, 
why are aphids in my garden in the first place? And I hadn't really done much thinking about that until I got ready to prepare this video and what I learned is this. Usually it's an imbalance in the fertilization you've been doing in your garden. Whether you're an organic gardener like I am or whether you use chemical fertilizers, the same imbalances can bring about an aphid population or an aphid boom. The best story that comes to mind from what I read and covered on the internet is this. When a person had a whole variety of fruit trees, but one of those fruit trees was the one which each morning when they would wake up, they would go out and pee against. That was the only fruit tree in their orchard where they had an aphid problem. The reason was nitrogen. The nitrogen, the nitrogen imbalance, as in the excess nitrogen at that one fruit tree where the person urinated every morning, was the reason why there was an aphid outbreak on that one specific fruit tree. So if you are using high nitrogen fertilizer or you're putting a bunch of chicken manure next to your plants, there's a very good reason that that spike in nitrogen levels is actually the cause for the aphid outbreak in your garden and they're trying to get things back in balance. They're trying to be nature's solution. So don't get angry at the aphid. Learn about how to set the balance up better in your garden so the aphids won't need to come and try to make things right. Nitrogen. Too much gets you aphids. The next little piece I want to show you is just a little clip of a victory. Now I've done this whole garden program that's online. It's at getbackyardabundance.com and what I'm going to show you is just a little clip taken from that gardening class, getbackyardabundance.com, where I had a real outbreak of aphids on a cauliflower plant and I did what I'm going to show you next and it was completely successful. So with this I was able to succeed and the cauliflower plant was able to thrive and was able to produce. So we'll just cut to that footage and I'll show you what the solution was that was needed there because squishing with my fingers and spraying with water and ladybugs showing up, none of those were solutions and I had to get a little bit more intense in finding a natural organic solution to control the aphids. This plant that I just harvested this cauliflower from, this was my little start that I'd started from seed this spring and when I planted that plant it was at the far end of this bed and remember it had mites on it and I had to spray a little bit of a soap solution on the mites and I wasn't sure at first whether that plant would survive or not. Well that plant now has given us this big beautiful cauliflower. So that little bit of pest control early on in the season has yielded us at day 80 this gorgeous cauliflower head. So as you can see in that little clip, saving the cauliflower plant and getbackyardabundance.com, it worked perfectly. And the ingredient I used for that is a natural soap with Castile in it. Castile, C-A-S-T-I-L-E. Works every time. The other product you could use if you don't have Castile is neem oil from a neem tree, N-E-E-M. And in either case, you dilute it, probably 40 or 50 to one with water, and you'd put it in a little sprayer or a big sprayer. And in either case, with this little one liter sprayer which would be about the same as a quart for those of you who speak imperial you just need a tablespoon like less than a quarter of a cup a couple tablespoons rather less than a quarter of a cup 20 30 mils would be all you need you'd need the same ratio 40 or 50 to 1 of neem oil or castile soap in a big sprayer like that Basically, when you spray that insecticide natural organic soap over the body of the aphid, it can't breathe and it dies. It's guaranteed success. So those are all your different ways of approaching it. Scrubbing them with your fingers, calling in the ladybugs, spraying off with a water no nozzle, or using neem oil or castile soap. Any one of those ways will work. Just keep ramping up the volume, but most of all, look at balancing the nitrogen in your garden so the fertilization is on and you'll deal with the aphids once and for all. Best of luck, guys, out in the garden. And if you've been watching this on YouTube, thanks a lot. Please ring that little notification bell so that you keep on getting more updates from me at Sustainable Stace that are hopeful, helpful, and healthy.